What's up today, YouTube? Today I'm going to be covering NVIDIA NIMS, which is very useful for developers that want to build AI applications without needing to have all of the hardware locally. But if you do have the hardware locally, you also have the option to do that. So let me just go through a quick demo of what they're offering, and then I'm going to show how you can use it via API in Python. All right, so here we are on uh, their catalog, and we can find all of the models that they're offering here. And then we've also got these NVIDIA NIM agents, which are pre-built optimized pipelines that allow you to connect multiple models together um, to kind of have a, a template or blueprint to do whatever task you want to do. So multimodal PDF extraction, build a digital human, and then um, and developing small molecules, which is way beyond my level of expertise. So I'm going to cover a NIM agent blueprint first. And uh, yeah, let's just go through this demonstration. So this demo is going to enable us to be able to talk to a digital human. So let's just go ahead and do click to speech. And uh, it's going to go and start. So let me allow my microphone. Hello, I'm James, a digital human. Feel free to ask me anything about NVIDIA and its products. Hey, what's up, James? Uh, could you give me a quick demonstration on what uh, NVIDIA NIMS are? I'd be happy to help. NVIDIA NIMS are a set of generative AI inference microservices that simplify deploying AI models at scale. Cool. And so what does that do to enable developers more in the, in the AI uh, generative sphere? NVIDIA NIMS simplify deploying AI models at scale, enabling developers to focus on building applications. And uh, I'm going to go and stop that right there. And um, and if you notice this little checkbox right here, this allows us to um, use NVIDIA's marketing knowledge base. So basically a LoRa put over their Llama model, uh, which is Llama 8B here. And then they've also put in other models in this pipeline as well. So right now there are only three, but NVIDIA is working on adding more for their pipelines here. And you can get a quick overview on how the architecture is designed here. And um, we're going to go and take a look at the other parts of the catalog. And that's going to be the individual models that you can call if you want to build your own applications uh, with these via API. So, And clicking on that all models uh, brings us to this page here where we can uh, see all of the models that NVIDIA is offering at the current moment. And they are working on adding more. Um, but 405B Llama 3.1, I'm going to try that because this is something that I can't run locally right now without um, distilling it down like crazy. So let's just use uh, one of their things here. Let's say, tell me about Dumbledore and send that through. And here we go. It's starting to give me an output about uh, who is Dumbledore. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop that there. So you can test out how the API might respond on this left hand side here. And then on this right hand side, you can call it via code. So I'll go over how you can do that a little bit later. And then there's even an option to be able to download and run this uh, locally on your computer if you have the hardware for it. However, 405B, uh, most likely you, you won't because you need a lot of VRAM for this. All right. And if you want to try this yourself, well, I'm going to go through all of that now. So this is definitely geared towards developers. Um, you are going to get some API credits that you can play around with. But once those are gone, you're going to need to pay but if you're a developer and you don't have all the hardware locally i think it is a great alternative because they're hosting all of this on their own servers so i'm gonna go and enter in an email here so i'm gonna enter in my business email um, this is what i did use to sign up for this service and then if you want additional login options you can choose any of these and log in with these as well and uh i'm gonna show how you can um use their use their api so Let's do 405B because this is something that I wouldn't be able to run locally at all. And um, we're going to be doing this in Python. So let's go ahead and uh, copy the code. Let's hit into some um, folder. I made a folder test NIMS open with code and we'll create a new Python project. So let's go and create test.py. Make this bigger for you guys and I'll paste this into here. So. For this, we're going to need to use the OpenAI library, and uh, we can get that installed. First, let's let's create a virtual environment so that we isolate our packages. And now let's just activate that virtual environment. So here we go. And to install of the OpenAI uh, library, all we need to do is pip install OpenAI, and uh, we'll be able to get that going. And uh, one thing that we're going to need is an API key. So 
let's head back on over into the interface and we can do get API key and they'll generate a key. Normally, you wouldn't want to expose it like this um, to the public, but I'm going to delete this key afterwards so that uh, you guys cannot use it. And we'll paste that into here. So let's do that. And then now I just want to select the virtual environment that I'm using for this um, project. And here we go. We don't have any issues or any errors and we can run this script now. So let's go to run, start debugging, Python debugger this file, and it's going to go and start operating. And so here we go inside of the terminal. You can see that uh, we've got the output from 405 B. And if you're wondering about customizability, uh, what's commonly used are LoRa's and that does indeed work with these. Now, unfortunately, I'm no expert in fine tuning LoRa's, so I found this fantastic video that goes over how you might be able to fine tune a Llama 3.1 LoRa and deploy this using NIMS. So go check that out if this is interesting to you and if you want to learn how to customize your NVIDIA NIM with a LoRa. So um, that'll be useful for those developers that want a specific application that's fine tuned with it. And you know that with LoRa's, you can change them out at inference. And so it makes it infinitely customizable, which is pretty awesome. And I do want to try out one thing real quick. I want to see if I can just make a quick little chat bot with this NIM using it via the API. So we're going to call this NIM and we're going to prompt it to create the code that we need um, to actually create this little chat interface. So let's create a new variable called text and we're going to... Um, Throw in a body of text into uh, the request. So let's do let's do text here. Throw that in there, and now we can throw in a customized message. I have this code here, and I would like to make a chat bot. Can you add the loop that would be needed for this? And let's use speech speech to text recognition so that I can speak to the model. Also have the model output using pi TTS X3, please. And I am just going to um, send this and uh, see what we can get out of this. And here we go. Now it's giving me the uh, the code right here and all of the other stuff that I would need for it. So alrighty, let's rerun that script. Hello there, how are you doing today? Hello. I'm doing well, thank you for asking. I'm a large language model, so I don't have feelings or emotions like humans do, but I'm always happy to chat with you and help with any questions or topics you'd like to discuss. How about you? How's your day going so far? Okay, so there you go. We just created a quick little chat bot and <laughs> prompted the model itself to just give us the code that we needed to do that. And so this is what NVIDIA is enabling um, developers to be able to do, to be able to iterate with these different models without having to get all of it set up locally and without having to go through all of the struggle to get these models optimized, which makes them pretty fast. So... Currently, they're adding more and more to their catalog. You may see that there are run anywhere and then preview options. So if we go into preview, um, what you won't be able to do is run this inside of a uh, Docker environment locally um, because they are working on making containers for these. But um, so as you can see right here for SDXL, there's no Docker option. So if I go back out and go to this run anywhere option, I actually get a, um, a Docker menu item here where I can um, pull and run this locally inside of a Docker container as long as I have the hardware to actually be able to do this. Alrighty, so how might you be able to get these ran locally if you have the hardware that's able to support it? I won't be able to actually show you it running on my computer because my hardware isn't able to run it, but NVIDIA is working on reducing the amount of memory that you need in order to actually have compatible profiles to do this. So I'm just going to be able to get to that step where I'm able to download the containers and check if these containers can run, but not able to run in this video today. And to do this, you're need to sign up for the NVIDIA developer program. So let me get this set up, Jared, Micah, and then role um, engineer or developer program. Join. And so that's going to give us access to be able to run this now. 
And so let's go and uh, continue with this process. So we need to get this all set up inside of Docker. So I'm not going to go over how you can get Docker installed on your computer. So we're going to search up NVIDIA name documentation and uh, get started. So to get started, it goes over what you're going to need. So NVIDIA Enterprise License, NVIDIA GPU, these here right here, uh, you are most likely going to have a better experience if you try this on Linux. So we're going to do WSL2, but WSL2 has a little bit of a different setup as I've figured out myself. And so you want to go through this page step by step. So first is going to be install Docker and the next is going to be install the NVIDIA container toolkit. So if you go here, we need to follow these instructions and let me just go through these with you. So saying that you have, let's say you have Docker desktop on your computer up to date and everything is good to go here. So let's say you have Docker desktop. We now want to open up PowerShell. Let's do that and then open up our WSL2 environment. So I'm going to search up Ubuntu and we're going to run all of this and set this up inside of WSL2. So here we go. We just copy paste this line, enter in your password, overwrite existing because I already have that existing and then Go ahead and paste that. Oops, we need to do sudo and then paste that into here. Alrighty, and then paste that next one. So that's going to go and get you all up and installed for the um, NVIDIA toolkit. And then you need to set up this configuration here. However, inside of WSL2, you need to set this up a little bit differently. Um, for example, if I try to do this inside of WSL2, I'm going to get this error. And so what I have to do is for Docker um, or for Windows on WSL2, you need to go into your Docker, your settings, your Docker engine. And then inside of here, you need to set it up uh, manually. So default runtime, NVIDIA runtimes, NVIDIA path, NVIDIA container runtime, runtime arg. So you need to paste these inside of here and then apply and restart and that'll get uh, you up and going. It'll allow you to see your NVIDIA GPUs. And so that was the end of it. And now what we can do is go back into our NVIDIA um, NIMS page and start doing all of the pooling that we need for Docker. So we're going to copy this line here, Docker log in, and we're going to log in. Um, well, it looks like I already have my existing credentials, but what you would do is you enter this first line in and then for your username, enter in the um, auth, OAuth token, dollar sign OAuth token. And then for the password, you need to get your API, generate the key, and then you need to paste that into here. So already, and uh, once you are logged in, uh, we are going to need to enter in a, uh, a few additional commands to get this pulled onto our device. So I am going to just paste this into a empty notepad so that we can put our API key here. And then we'll run these three lines. So paste that into here. So get those set up. And then here is our Docker command that we're going to run. So this is going to get it all um, running on your computer. Now, I am not able to run this on my device because I don't have sufficient VRAM for it, appears like. So as you can see, it says, uh, could not find a profile that is currently runnable with the detected hardware. And so I don't have enough GPU RAM available to be able to use this. And if you want to be able to check and validate which profiles um, will run on your computer, what you can actually do is uh, we'll enter in that same command and then we'll just add this list. Um, you guys can't see it right now, actually. Uh, let's see if we can. Uh... You need to run it with this list dash models that dash profiles command at the end. And this is going to um, show you which models or which profiles are compatible with your system and able to run. So at the current moment, my device is not able to run. So it says none and it says compatible with system, but not runnable due to low GPU free memory. And this is a model hash that I would run it with if uh, I was able to. So this is how you might be able to get an NVIDIA NIM container running locally on your computer, although 
even though I'm doing this on WSL, I would recommend that you do it in Linux if you have access to it, as it will um, probably run and go through a little bit smoother with the installation instructions. All right, and so that's gonna be it for today's video. This was sponsored by NVIDIA, but personally, I do think that NVIDIA NIMS are a great option for developers that want to kind of simplify the AI deployment process because you don't need to get everything installed on your system and you don't need all of the hardware requirements to run it. So you pay them a fee and personally I think it's a fair request for the amount of time that you're going to be able to save but of course every use case is different so lastly I'd like to thank all of the members of the channel as well for supporting me um, I very much appreciate you guys and uh, yeah I'll see you guys later